This is Mr. Moto. Mr. I. A. Moto. NBC presents the world's greatest international secret agent, Mr. I.A. Moto, the popular Japanese character created by Pulitzer Prize winner John P. Marquand. Ruthlessly fighting the enemies of freedom, Mr. Moto's only weapons are his mind, his courage, and his fabulous knowledge of international persons, places, and things. Tonight's story concerns the victim and stars Mr. Moto, Mr. I A Moto. I watch Dr. Staudenfeld with fascinated, incredulous horror. He was maliciously and cold bloodedly driving a human mind towards the abyss of complete schizophrenia. He turned from the controls of the machine and bent over the trembling, half-conscious body of Alec Gleason on the operating table. His cold, pale eyes glinted malignantly as he examined his prisoner. All this while, the machine hummed evenly. He is stubborn and defiant, this one. Yes, Dr. Stavendert. Yet if we drive him insane, his usefulness is nothing. Alec, listen. Where are you? I am in Stralau prison in the Soviet zone of Germany. And someday I'll get you. Switch it on. Yes, Doctor. <coughs> My name is Alec Gleason, and I have never been tortured or mistreated. Now, say it. My name is Alec Gleason. And I have never been tortured or mistreated. Assignment G-31 began exactly one full year ago. It required the greatest preparation and delicacy. Much of the story must remain shrouded in secrecy. Many of our counterintelligence operators in the Soviet zone of Germany had a hand in it. To tell too much could expose their covers and endanger their lives. It began a year ago when Janet Gleason received the now famous Gleason letter. I remember very well the night she brought it to me in my New York apartment. Mr. Modo. It's absolutely incredible that Alec could write a letter like this. But, Mrs. Gleason, it is his handwriting. It's his handwriting, but he couldn't have written it voluntarily. You think he was forced to write it? Either that or he's gone out of his mind. You are suggesting that... Yes. I believe he's a prisoner somewhere in Soviet Germany. I think they're doing things to him. Dreadful, horrible things. They've done it before. Vogler, Vincenti, and now Gross. And may I read the letter again? Certainly. Thank you. I know something's wrong. I know it. Dear Janet, at last I have come to realize the truth. The Wall Street warmongers have split Korea in two. Can you imagine Alec writing that? American imperialists are preparing for an atomic attack on Europe. They've driven him crazy. I have found a new way of life here in Soviet Germany, and I shall not return to America. I have discovered the truth, and you will never see me again, so do not try to find me, Alec. It's like a letter of a ten-year-old would write. You received it this morning? Yes, it was mailed from Berlin four days ago. And when did Alec leave New York? April the 2nd. He was going to Paris first, then Rome and Berlin. A month in each. He arrived in Berlin three weeks ago, Saturday. To do what? Gleason Oil had a refinery in Berlin before the war. It's all been re-equipped. Where in Berlin? In the British sector. Alec went over to supervise the installation of a new catalytic cracking plant. And? Well, Alec arrived on schedule three weeks ago, Saturday. And the following Wednesday, he left the plant at 6 o'clock, and they haven't seen him since. But weren't they concerned? No. They received a telegram from Paris, signed by Alex, saying that he'd been suddenly called back to America. Obviously, the telegrams are fake. But I am wondering what particular motive the communists would have for taking him prisoner. <laughs> Do they need a motive? Alec is a prominent American industrialist. 
He's an authority on the catalytic cracking of crude petroleum. They could be after what he knows, or they could want him to come out publicly on the side of communism. Can you imagine what the daily worker would do with that letter? It requires no imagination at all. Mr. Moto, help me, please. Find Alec for me. That may be difficult and expensive. Well, we're not exactly poor, you know. I have 5,000 shares of Gleason Oil Preferred Stock in my own name. It occurs to me that... Yes? Could you fly to Berlin with me tomorrow? Well, of, of course, if it's necessary. I have ways of arranging the flight. Well, what time would we leave? That depends on how quickly I can see the one man in New York who can help us. Oh, who? I cannot tell you his name. He is posing here in New York as a communist leader. Oh, I see. Uh, one thing more. Yes. Can you get a letter of credit to the Bank of England for 50,000 American dollars? Well, uh, by tomorrow? It's rather a large sum of money. Can you? Well, I... Yes, yes, I think so. Good. I will contact my man here. If all goes well, sometime tomorrow evening, we will take off for Europe. <laughs> It's good to see you, Moto. I've been pretending to be a communist for so long. Please, please, do not tell me about your work. Tell me one thing. Is Madeleine Rudier still in Berlin? Yes. Is she still with British counterintelligence? Yes, she's now known as Emmy Bruner. She runs a clock shop just off the Potsdamer Platz in the American sector. You are still her New York contact? Yes. How do I get to her? You give her this watch. Call on her at exactly three in the afternoon and give her this watch set at ten after eight. That's her code, eight ten. Three in the afternoon. This watch set at ten after eight. A clock shop off the Potsdamer Platz. I wonder if it is possible to speak with Fräulein Brunner. I am Fräulein Brunner. Three o'clock. Yes. And my watch is stopped at ten after eight. Who are you? My name is Moto. Mr. I. A. Moto. Not the Mr. Moto. I am sorry if my miserable reputation has preceded me. You worked on the Resnick affair? I did. And what do you want? Information. About an American citizen named Alec Gleason. Alec Gleason. He arrived in Berlin a little over three weeks ago. He has disappeared. Behind the curtain? It would seem so. He may have wandered in by accident or been kidnapped. He is a prominent American oil man. There are many reasons why they would want him. You know that I am doing this sort of thing all the time. That is why I came to you. I get them out. And in return, I ask only that they tell the world. But very few of them talk. They're either afraid or so sick that rational thinking is impossible. Can you help me? The quickest way is with money. Alec Gleason's wife is with me in Berlin. She is a wealthy woman. You understand, I take nothing myself. I have to pay certain people. How much? If he is in the Soviet sector, and if I can find him, his release can be obtained for a hundred thousand marks. That can be arranged. Give me a week. Find Mrs. Gleason the oldest clothes you can. I will make some inquiries. Bring her here a week from tonight. <laughs> So you are Mrs. Gleason. Yes, yes, I am. Oh, your hands are so, so smooth. I hope that once more before I die, I can be a woman again. Fräulein, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate what you're doing. We are both very grateful, Fräulein. Thank you. Your husband, Mrs. Gleason, is in Straulau prison. You, you found him? I have not found him, no. I am telling you that is where he is. They are trying to force him to come out publicly on the side of communism. They have waited long for a rich, important American. They want him to make speeches to the workers in the Soviet zone. But why? Why? Fräulein, Mrs. Gleason is most gracious and kind, but she is not completely aware. Oh, well, at the moment, Mrs. Gleason, the party propaganda is stating that American workers are slaves. It would be a great triumph to have an American industrialist confirm this statement. But Alex, an American citizen, why can't we just march in with some soldiers Shh, and... Please, please, Mrs. Gleason, keep your voice down. Even my clocks have ears. And it is much more difficult than that. Then what? What do we do? Oh, I can get more money. I can table no. London and... 
Mr. Moto, the facts are these. He is in Straulau prison. A Russian named Manilov, who is a lieutenant in the Volkspolizei, is... The gone. what? The Volkspolizei. They are the secret police. Oh. Go on, Fräulein. Manilov works at Straulau prison. He will try to arrange something for a hundred thousand marks. <laughs> What's the beginning? For three long months, we planned. I sat up nights polishing my Russian until I spoke it like a native. I studied a floor plan of Stralau prison until I knew every corridor, every door, every cell by heart. Janet Gleason waited with a desperate patience born of her deep love for her husband. Emmy Brunner worked with a fanaticism born of suffering and hate. She anticipated every danger, foresaw every possibility. At last, we were ready. And at last, Manilov was able to arrange it. He came one night very late to Emmy Brunner's truck shop. Emmy, it is perfect. He is a different man. Yes, Manilov, it is good. I will pass as a Mongolian Russian anywhere. The smooth shaved head. The slanting eyes, it is perfect. And his face, Amy, his face. I injected paraffin under the cheekbones. Mr. Moto, I am sorry I had no ether, but it was impossible to obtain. Pain, Fräulein, is to the Oriental a state of mind. Now, in a few weeks, the wax will melt and drain away. The contours of your face will go back to normal. Manilov, yes. the last check. Let's go over it again. Yeah. A card certifying he's a member of the Volksbrief. Good. And my identity card? Yes, and the ration card. Yes, yes. I have bribed Gleason's regular guard. For two weeks, beginning tomorrow, he will pretend to be sick. You will take his place. Yes. And you understand that if you are caught, I will deny I ever saw you. He knows that money, love. Gleason is in the sub-basement, cell 40. When you report in to me, I will give you the keys. Even if I am alone, do not let on you know me. The whole thing is of the greatest danger. I will use every discretion. Ali Gleason may not be easy to convince. Why not? They keep three inches of water on the stone floor of his cell. What? For months now he has been lying on a narrow wooden bunk. If he wishes to move, he must walk through the water. It is ice cold. And he is in bare feet. And inhumanity to his brother. As well as the impulse hypnosis. They have done other things. You mean the pail? Yes, three times a week. The pail? They put a large galvanized scrub pail over his head. Then they beat it with an iron bar. Oh, there is not a mark made on his body. But the noise of it crashes in his ears like the music of hell. I must go now. It's dangerous for me to be in the American sector. You will report for work at the prison tomorrow night, Mr. Moto. Yes, Manilov. And thank you. Manilov, before you go, why were you so surprised when we told you Mrs. Gleason was in Berlin? Because part of their torture of Ali Gleason was to tell him... Tell him what? Tell him his wife was dead. Water on the floor. Go away. I'll say anything you want. You leave me alone. Mr. Gleason, please listen. I am a friend from outside. Do you understand? Mr. Gleason, your wife and I are trying to get you out of here. I'll never get out. Go away. I am pretending to be your attendant. I am really a Japanese-American. Your wife and I are in Berlin. You're and... lying. They got hurt. No, 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 Mr. Gleason. They have. They told me. Please believe me, Mr. Gleason. She's dead. Janet is dead. Leave me alone. Look. No, no, please. Please keep your eyes open. Look, look at this. It is the locket you gave your wife for her birthday last year. Look. Look at it, Mr. Gleason. Please, please. It's a trick. They've killed her. They said... She's dead. Please, Mr. Gleason, believe me. I know I look like a Mongolian Russian. I am not. And your wife is all right. I swear she is. Let me... Let me see the locket. Yes, here. Listen, 
Are you... I promise. I give you my word. Your wife is alive. She is well and in Berlin. <laughs> Jack, Jack. Shh, shh, please, please. We are trying to get you out of here. Please, please be quiet. And give me back the lock. No, no, it's mine. It's mine. Shh, shh. If they find it, everything will be ruined. Give it to me. I want it. It's mine. I... Someone is coming. It's him. Who? The doctor. They, they take me upstairs. Give me the locket. Mr. Gleason, in the name of heaven, give me that locket. Now, trust me. Ah, our rebellious patient. And who are you? Uh, the new guard, Doctor. The regular one is sick. Lieutenant Maniloff assigned me to his place. Your identity card? Yes, Doctor. Here. Mm -hmm. You know what to do? Yes, Doctor. Have him in the operating room in ten minutes. Yes, sir. No, 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 I won't go. I won't go anymore. Well, do that, you're told. Upstairs in ten minutes. What followed was a nightmare of horror. I took Alec Gleason upstairs to the first floor where Dr. Staudenberg waited in a small, well-equipped operating room. Alec Gleason was strapped to a standard type operating table and two silver electrodes were fastened in place at his temples, another to his back at the base of his spine. Dr. Staudenberg flicked a switch and the machine hummed evilly. He must make a speech for us a week from Thursday. He's to tell the workers here the true state of affairs in America. The auto-hypnosis and suggestion must be complete. Yes, Doctor. Listen to me, Alec. Turn it on. Yes, sir. In American factories, the workers are chained to their jobs for 17 hours a day. In American factories. The workers are chained to their jobs. Seventeen hours a day. Good, Alec. Excellent. Oh. Here, where the glorious Soviet culture flourishes like a flower, I have, for the first time in my life, seen true freedom. Uh, here, where the glorious Soviet culture flourishes like a flower, I have for the first time in my life seen true freedom. Excellent. By a week from Thursday, he will publicly repudiate his American citizenship. And... And then what, Mr. Murdoch? They made him say incredible things. Electromagnetic hypnosis. Oh, they'll kill him. No, 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 Mrs. Gleason. That is not their way. When is he to make the speech? There is a youth rally in the Congress Hall of the Berlin Zoo a week from Thursday, Fräulein Brunner. I just can't, can't stand this. It's so sick. I promise you that a week from Thursday, you will have him back. You are sure they don't suspect you? Maniloff has vouched for me. My papers are in order, and the makeup is flawless. Is, is Maniloff coming tonight? Any minute now. <laughs> It's late. Manilov is afraid. He is playing both ends against the middle. It is hard to be punctual when you sleep with the terror. Here he is. Now. We can do it tonight. Gleason makes the speech. A week from Thursday. Yes. There will be you, Alec Gleason, and Dr. Staudenberg in the car. Yes, yes. You pass within three blocks of the border separating the British from the Soviet sector. How you do it is up to you. If you fumble, I will deny everything. Of course. Denied. Gleason needs to speak. I will assign you to cut his hair and shave him. Manilov, do they suspect anything? No, no. Motus Russian is perfect to close the papers. But a single slip and it is finished. They will empty the cell of water tomorrow. The breaking of his will is over. Only the hypnosis is to continue. Your animals. All of your animals. I'd like to take every one Shh, of you and... Mr. Don't... Gleason, please. Manilov, I am holding the money. A hundred thousand marks. Deliver him here on Thursday and you will be paid... Now, go quickly, Manilov. It is dangerous. Fräulein. Yes? I must have a revolver. Carrying a gun is dangerous. On the night of the speech, being without one will be more dangerous. Mrs. Leeson. Yes? Somehow, 
before a week from Thursday. You must buy me some adrenaline and some caffeine. Otherwise, I am afraid your husband will be mentally and physically unable to cooperate with me at all. An American military doctor is the most likely source. All right. Uh, and also, a hypodermic needle. I can get you that. Then, all that remains for us to do between now and a week from Thursday is to pray that God will protect our efforts. There, Mr. Gleason, your hair is cut. You are shaved and dressed. How do you feel? The work is... In America, are all victims. Alec, listen to me. I am not going to hurt you. I am your friend. What? What's that? I have to give you an injection. No, not another one. to help you. Help you. Adrenaline and caffeine. Please, don't hurt me anymore. I must have your cooperation and help. In just a few seconds, you will feel stronger. Your head clearer. Now, please, hold still, please. There. Now, don't say anything. Just listen. Your speech tonight is supposed to be of your own free will. There will be no guards, just you, Dr. Stoutenberg, and I. You are not supposed to be a prisoner. Not a prisoner? No. I will be driving. You will sit in the back with the doctor. I have here an iron bar. No, no, don't. Please, Alec, don't. Alec, they, they put a pail over my head and they beat it with... No, 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 Alec. Hmm? Oh, it is so very, very important that you understand. I cannot manage it alone. I have to drive. Now, listen. Hmm? On our way to the Congress Hall. We have to pass through an alley that is three blocks from the British sector. When we get to that point... Alec, do you understand me? I... I think so. When we get to that point, I will honk the horn twice. Short honks. Can you hit Dr. Stoudenfurt with this iron bar? Hit him? You will be in the back seat with him. Hit him and shove him out of the car. Out of the car? Alec, it is very important that you help me. Remember... Two hunks of the horn. Hit him, shove him out of the back seat. Back seat? The doctor is coming. Oh, Alec, Alec, it is very, very dangerous. And you are sick, but you must try very, very hard. In less than an hour, you can be with your wife. <laughs> You're driving too fast. You'll make him nervous. Yes, Doctor. You're all right, Alec? Yes, I'm fine. Uh, you seem much stronger. Your pupils are dilated almost as up. Alec, what are you... God, help me! <sighs> Open the door, Alec. Open the door, quickly. Shove him out. Hurry, hurry, Alec. I, I can't. He's are too you... heavy. I... All right, all right. Just a hundred yards, Alec. The soldiers, where? Your left. They've seen us. Look out, they got right. Down, Alec. Get down on the floor. Hang on. We're coming to the barrier. <laughs> doing this. They're 20 minutes late. Sometimes there are delays. What could go wrong? Perhaps at the barrier there was something. Oh, God, please, get him out, please. <laughs> Must we sit here and listen to those clocks? They drive you crazy. They remind me, Mrs. Gleason, that time is running out. But every second we draw closer to the edge of the abyss, yet still we cannot decide whether we want to win the last war or the next. Oh, I... I'm sorry. I... I'm just not used to this. This horror. It's so fantastic. Not to me. So when you go back, tell them in America. Tell them to get down on their knees every day of their lives and thank God for their country. Tell them what you've seen here. <laughs> oh, Mr. Morton. Mr. Morton. We had an accident at the barrier. A rifle bullet exploded a tire. I you mean? He's dead. No, no, no. Mrs. Gleason, he may not recognize you. 
The effect of the adrenaline has worn off. Please, try not to upset him. Come in, Alec. <gasps> oh, Alec. Alec, what is it? Darling, it's me, Janet. You're all right now. All right? Don't you know me, darling? I, I'm Janet. I'm your wife. Janet? Why, what? Janet! Janet! You have just heard Mr. Moto, the world's greatest international secret agent in The Victim. James Monk starred as Mr. Moto. The script was written and directed by Harry W. Junkin, produced by Carol Irwin.